All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to STL History Live. My name is Aaron Pelker, and I'm a Community Engagement Coordinator at the Missouri History Museum, and I want to thank you for spending part of your Friday afternoon with us. Before we get to today's presentation on the Mississippi River is for the birds, I'd like to make a couple of brief remarks. Uh, the first is to thank two key contributors that help make programs like this possible, city and county residents and their contributions through the Zoo Museum Tax District, and of course, our museum members. If you're already a member, I do wanna thank you for your generosity. If you're not, but would like to learn more about the membership process, please check the chat feature on Zoom for a URL link to our membership page on our website. Next, I wanna take a moment to explain some of the features on Zoom. If you look at your toolbar on the Zoom app, you'll see two features I'd like to highlight, closed captioning and the Q&A feature. You can enable closed captioning by clicking on the CC box on your toolbar. After our presentation, which will last about 30 minutes, we'll have an opportunity for about 10 minutes to ask questions of our presenter. You can use the Q&A dialog box on the Zoom app toolbar to submit those questions but we do ask that you please wait until the end of the lecture to submit those questions, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. Also, if you must leave the presentation early today, we are recording it, and that lecture will eventually be made available on the Missouri History Museum's YouTube channel. So with that, I'd like to introduce today's featured speaker, Ken Buckholtz, director of the Audubon Center at Riverlands. So thank you for finding yourself here. Enjoy and take it away, Ken. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Mississippi River is for the Birds presentation. Thank you for being here and thank you to the Missouri Historical Society for making this opportunity possible. My name is Ken Buckles. I am the director of the Audubon Center at Riverlands. If you haven't been to our center, we are located in West Alton, Missouri, just before you cross the Clark Bridge over the Mississippi River to Alton, Illinois. The photo you're looking at now shows trumpeter swans in flight over Ellis Bay in full view of the Audubon Center at Riverlands. The Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary, where we are located, is home to a large population of overwintering trumpeter swans, which typically begin arriving here in early November and staying through mid-February before heading north to their nesting grounds in the upper Midwest.
Hi, all. Sorry for the difficulties. We are working on sharing our screen right now. So just give us one moment. I apologize. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mississippi Rivers for the Birds presentation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. And thank you to the Missouri Historical Society for making this opportunity possible. My name is Ken Buckles. I'm the director of the Audubon Center at Riverlands. If you haven't been to our center, we are located in West Alton, Missouri, just before you cross the Clark Bridge over the Mississippi River into Alton, Illinois. The photo you're looking at right now shows trumpeter swans in flight over Ellis Bay in full view of the Audubon Center at Riverlands. The Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary, where we are located, is home to a large population of overwintering trumpeter swans, which typically began arriving here in early November and staying through mid-February uh, before heading north to their nesting grounds in the upper Midwest. If you've been to our center, you already know about our interesting engaging programs about birds, rivers, and nature for schools and the general public. Our center is located on the Mississippi River, surrounded by the beautiful Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary, which are public lands managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which you are invited to use daily, dusk to dawn. At Riverlands, you can explore a winding trail through a prairie marsh or a river island, enjoy an early morning chorus of bird song, or you can stroll one of our accessible paths right around the center. So today I'm going to talk about the Mississippi River and its importance to birds and how we can make our region even better for birds and people. We'll leave time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. So let's get started by first talking about the Mississippi River and its significance to people. So for thousands of years, people have relied on the Mississippi River for sustenance, transportation, commerce, cultural needs, and more. The river's rich bottomlands were cultivated for crops, which fueled the rise of native Mississippian culture. A wilderness outpost on the river later becomes a French trading village marking the beginnings of modern day St. Louis. Of course, the Missouri Historical Society is your best source about the history and culture of the river. The Mississippi River is important to people and it continues to be that way today. According to a recent profile by the Mississippi River Basin Association, Economic sectors in the Upper Mississippi River Corridor generate more than $345 billion annually and support over one million jobs. But did you know the Mississippi River is also vital to millions of birds? It provides food, shelter, and safe passage, 
for 325 bird species. 300 of those species you can see at Riverlands uh, over the years. The Mississippi River is also a flyway for 60% of North American birds and a spring and fall migratory corridor for about 40% of U.S. waterfowl. So you just heard me use the terms flyway and migratory corridor. What is a flyway and what is migration? A flyway is simply a bird highway that birds take to and from their wintering and nesting grounds. Birds have been following these routes for hundreds of years. There are four flyways in the U.S. The Pacific, the Central, the Mississippi, and the Atlantic. Migration is a seasonal movement of animals from one region to another. Birds are among many animals that migrate. Some others include whales, fish, bats, and even zebras. St. Louis rests at the heart of the Mississippi Flyway, which encompasses 14 of 50 states. Throughout the flyway, we share the Mississippi River with millions of birds, or should I say, millions of birds share the Mississippi River with us. Why do birds migrate? Birds are moving from low or decreasing resources to areas of high or increasing resources when they migrate. Food and nesting are two primary resources they are looking for. Changes in day length, lower temperatures, food supplies, and genetic predisposition can also trigger migration. The bobolink showed here is a member of the blackbirds and orioles family. It migrates from Central to America to, to northern stretches of uh, North America, which is nearly a 12,500 mile round trip. You might be wondering, how does a bird like the bobolink know where it's going? Bird migration is the subject of many studies and a developing field of research. The short answer is that different birds use different strategies to get where they are going, but there is still so much more we don't know about this topic, which is deserving of its own presentation by someone far more qualified than I am. So not all birds migrate uh, and all, not all birds migrate the same distance or in the same way. For example, ruby-throated hummingbirds are complete migrants, spending their spring and summer in places like St. Louis and wintering in Central America. Rarely are hummingbirds other than ruby throat seen in Missouri. Bald eagles have rebounded since the banning of DDT in 1972, thanks to efforts of Audubon and other conservation organizations. Now, thankfully, it is not uncommon to see them in spring, summer, and fall along our great rivers. Winter, though, provides the best opportunities to see eagles as they are migrating south, seeking less competition for food and other uh, fish and other food in open waters with rivers, lakes, ponds, and northern states um, in the northern states freeze. The American goldfinch seen here resides he year round here in Missouri and elsewhere. However, in winter their drab olive color is far less noticeable than their bright yellow feathers and colorful per chicory calls in summer. When birds, what, what habitats do birds find along our great rivers? Three primary habitats are bottomland forests, marsh, and wet prairie, which are all wetlands. Wetlands are defined by the presence of water. They are also lands transitional between terrestrial and aquatic systems. 
Many birds, insects, and other wildlife are dependent on wetlands for critical stages in their life cycles. Birds and many other species, species use wetlands for food, shelter, and safe passage. So why should we care about birds? Birds are nearly plant every ecosystem on the planet. As such, they are harbingers of our environmental health. They also provide what are known as ecosystem services as uh, pest controllers, pollinators, and seed dispersers. Birds are also economic engines in themselves. Bird watchers spend billions of dollars each year on their hobbies and passions for birds. Birds are also intertwined throughout our culture, art, literature, and music. They are symbols of countries, currencies, and our beloved sports teams. Go Cards! So we are known for our Midwest hospitality in St. Louis, but is our friendliness in flyover country extended to birds? Let's explore why St. Louis is on this list, and more importantly, what we can do to remove ourselves from this list. Birds confront many natural hazards during their migratory journey, such as storms, heat, cold, long distances, mountains, massive bodies of water, and predators. Birds also face many induced obstacles from humans. First and foremost, the destruction of habitat they need for food, shelter, and safe passage. Today, fragmentation, destruction, and degradation have left only remnants of the habitats along our great rivers that birds and wildlife need to survive. <clears throat> Building strikes kill and injure millions of birds migrating annually. Many birds migrate at night, and many of these birds are attracted to lights, which can confuse or disorient them, them resulting in collisions with buildings. The wood thrush shown here is a species of concern due to fragmentation and loss of forest habitat. Unfortunately, as a low flyer, it is also a frequent victim of building collisions. Birds can also mistake a window for an opening or a reflection of their habitat. The white-throated sparrow pictured here is common and widespread. You have probably heard its memorable song in late fall or early spring, sweet, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. It is also sadly too common a casualty of window strikes. Outdoor cats are fierce and productive bird predators, killing millions of birds each year. This number might seem, seem incomprehensible until you consider that there are tens of millions of outdoor cats in the world. For decades, Audubon has used science to understand and abate threats to birds. Since our beginning in 1905, we have used education and outreach to engage people in conservation solutions. Through our Bird Communities Initiative, we work in cities and towns like St. Louis to help people take actions that are good for both birds and people. At the end of this pre presentation, you will see a list of resources to help you make your home, place of business, and neighborhood bird friendly. And you can always find this info at audubon.org. To survive, native birds need native plants and the insects that they have co-evolved with. For example, research by entomologist Doug Tallamy has shown that native oaks support more than 550 different species of butterflies and moths. 
the non-native ginkgo tree, on the other hand, supports just five. Caterpillars are a go-to food source for migrant and resident birds alike. So for example, in the 16 days between hatching and fledging, a clutch of Carolina chickadees consume more than 9,000 caterpillars. There's simply not enough places for birds to live in many of our cities and towns. If done right, artificial architecture can simply Artificial architecture can aptly serve as suitable nesting and shelter for some birds, especially cavity nesters. Be patient as it can take a year or so for a bird to settle into its new house. Many birds supplement their diets with food from backyard feeders. You can find the Audubon Guide to Bird Feeding at audubon.org with tips and best practices for attracting and nourishing birds in your backyard. You can prevent birds from crashing into your windows. There are many proven solutions, including ones you can purchase or make right at home. Many DIY, DIY solutions are excellent projects for kids and grandkids to help you with. There are also many reputable and effective commercial applications for buildings. Reducing and eliminating, eliminating lights during peak migration periods reduces bird collisions with buildings. Fortunately, for birds and you, Lights out solutions are pretty easy to implement. Some are simple as a flip of a light switch. Bird friendly solutions also include keeping cats indoors. Cats like mousers started out as ferocious killers of birds, mice, and other wildlife at, as outdoor cats. As you can see here, Mouser is only too happy with his new indoor environs. Conservation organizations like Audubon need financial support, volunteers, and community scientists. The Great Backyard Bird Count, held annually in February, is an excellent way to participate in bird conservation without leaving your home. Scientists use data from the Great Backyard Bird Count to develop bird conservation strategies. We share the Mississippi River and our region with millions of birds. There are many great organizations and resources available to help you make your home and community bird friendly and make St. Louis an even better place for birds and people to live. In between visits to Riverlands, keep in touch and stay informed about our programs, events, birds, and the Mississippi River. We are your gateway to nature in St. Louis. Thank you for your interest and concern for nature and birds, the Mississippi River, and making the St. Louis region an even better place for birds and people to live.
At this time, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to use the Q&A box on your Zoom app to submit those questions. I'm sure Ken would be happy to take any. Well, if no one has any questions, I do want to thank you again for attending today's STL History Live. Uh, thanks to Ken for a fascinating look at the Mississippi River and its bird population. As always, your feedback is important to us, so we would appreciate it if you could take our short survey. Uh, Kobo Toolbox survey should have opened in one of your browser tabs, so please keep an eye out for that when we end this session. So thanks again. And remember that you can find the full schedule of STL History Live on the Missouri Historical Society's website and Facebook page. But I do hope that you'll join us next time on Tuesday, June 2nd at 11 a.m. for our next lecture titled Celebration of Bread, Connecting Our Past to Our Present. Thanks and enjoy. Actually, Ken, I think we have a few questions here that came in uh, real late. So if you want to take those before we uh, stop our Zoom today, uh, feel free. Sure, and um, what, I'm not seeing the chat questions. Can you, is that something that you can share with me, Aaron? Yeah, so if you open the Q&A on your toolbar, it should pop up. It should I, say open question. Okay, I got that, yep. Um, the question is, what is the best time of year to see the highest number of species at Riverlands? Uh, I think the answer to that is either spring or fall migration. Uh, spring migration, you're looking at uh, April 15th through sort of May 15th, and then fall migration is a little more spread, and you can start uh, seeing a variety of birds coming back through uh, the river um, starting in uh, late, late August all the way through um, even late October. Next question is, are the walking trails open? Yes, they certainly are. Uh, and you can walk about 8.1 miles of trails uh, in and around uh, Riverlands um, from dusk to dawn. Uh, one question is, I live in a wooded area in mid-Missouri. What can I do to support the birds here? Um, I would suggest checking in with St. Louis Audubon and their uh, uh, Backyard uh, Birds at Home program, and they can meet with you and talk about ways you can make your property more bird friendly. Uh, the question about Great Backyard Bird Count in February. Um, yes, it will be uh, uh, every February, and folks from across the country can participate. Uh, more information will be coming out uh, as we draw near to that time. Uh, question is, what is my favorite hiking trail on the sanctuary uh, from Emily? And I think that's a great question because we have some tremendously great and cool walking trails. Mine is Ellis Island. Um, right now, Ellis Island's undergoing some um, improvements to the trail and some natural resource improvements as well, uh, but it should be ready to go here uh, later this summer. But it's one of the few places where you can walk along the main stem of the Mississippi River, and there are a variety of habitats uh, enclosed within that island. So birding and just walking along it uh, are really uh, a great experience. Is there a bird that you hope to see each year but you haven't seen yet? Uh, Michelle uh, asks 
that question. And the answer is uh, yes, I did miss seeing bobolinks. Um, they came through on their way to uh, the very northern stretches of uh, uh, Canada, and I, I miss them. Unfortunately, um, I'll have to wait till fall to hopefully, hopefully catch a glimpse of them uh, in September or October. Um, last question is, do you know if there are any plans for uh, a MODIS tower in your area? Um, a MODIS tower is new technology that scientists are using to help track birds and migrations. Um, and the answer is, we are now in the process of working with our national science, science team and the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, to hopefully uh, land a MODIS tower here at Riverlands. Uh, we'll keep you posted on our progress. There's no more uh, open questions, uh, but certainly you can uh, call us, contact us via social media, and check our webpage for uh, information and updates. And of course, you're always welcome to come out to Riverlands and enjoy uh, nature at, at its finest here in the St. Louis area. All right, I wanna thank Ken again for that wonderful presentation. And again, thank all of you for uh, joining us today. And just as a reminder, I'll repeat it one more time, but I do hope you'll join us next Tuesday, June 2nd at 11 a.m. for our next lecture titled, Celebration of Bread, Connecting Our Past to Present. So thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the weekend. Thank you.